Write your own path with opportunities. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another extra. I'm super excited today because we are with Brie Bonomo. I love her last name, by the way. That is the coolest last name. And we are going to hear more helpful, super secret tips and not so secret tips about how to succeed as an author. So welcome, Brie. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself and, and who you are as an author. Absolutely. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as said, I'm Brie Bonomo, and I am a mental health counselor by day, and at night I am a fantasy and horror writer. My work has been featured in the Stygian Society as well as in Havoc, and I also publish poetry under the pseudonym B. Lapka, and I have a few poems published in the Reclaim the Light anthology through Beyond the Veil Press. Awesome. Awesome. And you've been, you've been obviously you have experience, um, now that you do have experience, what do you kind of wish every writer knew? Like, what are some of the things that you think that people could, instead of learning this the hard way, learn it from the beginning? Um, I definitely think one of the things that I wish I knew is that, like, two things, actually, is one, feedback is important, and it's going to challenge your ego. <laughs> and two, rejection does get easier. The, I've been submitting a lot of short stories lately. I've also queried three times. And as far as novel writing goes, have not been successful with queries. So the more I get rejected, the more I'm just kind of like, all right, next time is going to happen. And when I first started all this journey, I always thought I wanted to fight everybody <laughs> with their criticism, even though it was probably valid. And I also would be like really upset when people reject me and be like, oh, they just don't get my work. When in reality, it was bad. Like I was a new writer. I didn't know what I was doing. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's actually really, really good advice um, because a rejection is not a personal attack. It's not a reflection mm -hmm. of who we are as a person or even the story. Sometimes it could just be not a good fit or 500 people submitted to something mm -hmm. and you're not one of them. And you also didn't win the lottery this week. And you know, so yes, the odds know. aren't in your favor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but also just to have that that openness to the to the feedback, mm -hmm. you know, I think it helps a lot. I know, uh, of course, I did had no idea what passive voice was when I did my first novel. Yes. And then, <laughs> yeah, somebody pointed it out. And I was like, really like puzzling, you know, like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, click, 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 you know. Um, and now I know when to watch out for it, though, because I notice when I'm telling something that's important to me, I flip into passive voice. Mm. And I think it's because I don't want to mess this up. So it's like a hesitancy, a fear of so getting I it right. Yeah. It. Yeah. So, you know, but yeah, I would still be writing in passive voice. I just probably wouldn't really be published if I kept doing that. But you, <laughs> exactly. There, you know, there you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You learn. And I think, like, honestly, throughout this, too, like, you're going to keep learning every time you write something new, every time you get feedback, every time you submit. Mm. I literally just learned something new this week and I've been writing for 10 years now. And that was the difference between an M dash and an N dash. And I was like, what do you mean an N dash? Yeah. So um, that was feedback I got that it's like, you really need this instead. And I was like, so I had to look it up. I didn't know, I've never even heard of it. Oh, that's that's awesome. I, I'm actually one of those geeky people that loves <laughs> learning about that stuff. And yeah, when I learned about the M dash, it's called the M dash because it's the length of an M. So, so, so that that makes sense then of why the n is only one hump versus uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah interesting yeah and so one of the, it was one of those things it was like i'm i'm sitting here with my boss it was in the newspaper world and just kind of going oh and i can tell he was just like you're on the clock have your epiphanies and then another time but <laughs> that's hilarious yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah and it's such a simple thing i i actually learned about shun formatting i probably shouldn't admit this when I took over a magazine, because I really didn't do a lot of submission mm -hmm. myself, I self-published, and then uh, yeah, I was I I found about found out about shun formatting then as I was wait why is this crazy formatting everybody's doing and da 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 oh mm -hmm. oh mm. <laughs> yeah I I found out about it last year for the same reason as as yeah. I was trying to submit and it was like you need this yeah I was like okay I got to figure out what it is. <laughs> 
yeah yeah exactly and and then then at first i was like the rebel of like yeah that, you cannot contain writing it will be in whatever format it is then after working with them like no 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 please put it in a channel it really really helps <laughs> like there's yes. reasons yeah i just told somebody that day i wish everyone would just do shun format because it's so much easier to format everything the same that's another thing to keep in mind when you're submitting to magazines nothing is consistent <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So always go with the submission guidelines, but but let's do talk about submitting um, to to magazines and stuff, and also AuthorTube, which is something you were recently part of. These are helpful things for authors. We don't, especially I think these days, you know, the last 10, 15 years with technology, the the shift has changed. We can no longer sit and write our magnum opus on our washing machine. You know, and yep. we have to be out there and we have to be meeting people and doing things like AuthorTube. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? And what advice would you give people to, you know, for submitting and getting yourself out there, not only in the written word, but all around that in the, the yeah. author sphere, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I do think that it's like a fine line because I don't think you need to be like fully like, chronically online in order to have a leg up in the world, obviously, then we wouldn't be writing. But I do think it is important nowadays to have some kind of network, whether it's just a, a bunch of critique partners or, you know, people to give you opportunities. <laughs> like, it's really good to know what's out there. And so being at least aware of the author sphere is important, whether or not you have an author tube channel or an author gram or author talk you know you don't necessarily need them as long as you're watching them all the time and mm -hmm. that's kind of i ended up getting into the sphere partly because of bookstagram back in 2016. so i had always thought like i really wanted to be online myself like i wanted to do youtube but didn't know where to start and then in 2016 i got on bookstagram and started seeing like there's this whole community of people posting about books and then finally like pre-pandemic 2019, I was like, all right, I'm going to take the plunge. I got challenged in like a Discord group to do something. And I'm like, I'm just going to post this intro of my author life on YouTube and see where it goes. I loved it. Uh, it was something new, but then people welcomed me. And then from there, I've just like grown into the field. So I've met my critique partners. I met some of my best friends and writers now because of all of the connections I've made. Because not everybody in my personal life and most of them don't write. So having that commonality was super important. And like I've met publishers, I've gone to conferences now, like I've done all of these things that I would not have done if I didn't jump into AuthorTube and Bookstagram. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, which kind of combats the whole, the the idea that authors, we get isolated. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're usually writing alone somewhere, not supported, well, not, mm -hmm. not supported, but I am very supported by my family, but yes, um, you know, we they they do get bored sometimes when I am going on for an hour about okay. plot devices or tropes or something. <laughs> you have to find the right people to talk about that. Yes, uh, with. and so um, yeah, reaching out kind of. Do you have like some tips maybe for people who might want to do what you did? Absolutely. Um, the one that I found was the the hashtags now they're not as popular on author tube as they used to be but the like author tube newbie book tube newbie tags are still relevant and almost everybody starts with those and that's a really good way to find people who are just joining the community as well as posting it and bringing people to your own community so if you want to do youtube specifically i would recommend the author tube or book tube newbie tags you could Google them and they probably come up immediately with a million people. <laughs> um, but otherwise, just, you know, having like a gentle presence, even if you're not someone that posts a lot on any social media, like not everybody does the, the video space. But just, you know, posting pictures like I just do sometimes, too. I'll just post a picture of my messy desk and talk about editing in my Instagram. People, you know talk to me. <laughs> and sometimes I'll get people who I've never interacted with on Instagram be like, oh my God, I'm in the same space. And then I have a follower. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Which, and then I, I think is also part of that isolation maybe that we, mm -hmm. 
that we want, you know, oh, you're doing that too. You're an mm -hmm. author. I'm an author. This is what that community looks like because mm -hmm. we don't have often the common space, um, except for when you, like you said, you started going to conventions and stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you think um, having that has kind of affected your career? Hmm. I don't think much <laughs> in the way of like getting further in my career but awareness and like the connections of like who to follow, what to do. I've gotten like professional feedback for discounted rates going to conventions, which has just helped my writing overall. And um, like I said, not that I've gotten a novel published at this point, I am pursuing traditional publishing. So that's a tougher space, but learning how to make query letters, learning how to actually do a synopsis well, like all of that was invaluable. So while I might not have been like, I met an agent and they were like, submit to me. I still got a lot of feedback that just made my writing grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, well, and it is a long haul as mm -hmm. well. You know what I mean? It's, I think uh, ages ago, I was doing an interview with somebody who was an overnight sensation. Oh, wow. And then I can't remember her name. And that was the the overnight sensation, mm -hmm. air quotes. And, and that's what she said is I'm actually not an overnight sensation. <laughs> I've been doing this for about 10 years. And, and she said in her observation, it's five books, five years. It seems like before you really start making traction. Um, and I say books, I'm very loose of publication. Mm -hmm. We'll say publication. And uh, and it does seem like as I've I've watched that metric, like that seems to be very accurate. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what do you think? Do you think you've observed that or how true do you think that is? Yeah, I'm not necessarily sure if I've observed it directly, but just even thinking of my own experience, I'm like, huh, I think I'm on book five that I'm writing and I definitely feel mo the most confident about any book I've ever done. So maybe this is, and I started seriously writing and querying about five, six years ago. So yeah. this might match up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, okay. So, so, so far that, that sounds true. <laughs> mm -hmm hope <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. my plan is to query again by october november this year before everyone closes their submissions for the holidays so yeah that's awesome well good luck with that that's very Thank you. cool well and that's one of the things i would like to know is um best practices for writers like for submitting like are, are there things that you would say oh definitely don't do that or this really helped mm -hmm. well i think the main thing <laughs> And it's like, the, I think the thing that anybody would always say is don't submit without following the guidelines. Yes. <laughs> like, as, no matter what it is, whether you're querying an agent or you're submitting a short story or poetry, like make sure that you are actually following what they want. So if you're following an agent and they at, only publish romance and you're trying to publish a horror book, that's an automatic no. Why are you wasting your time? Yeah. And similarly, if you are submitting guidelines and you don't submit in the shun format, like you're just mm -hmm. wasting everyone's time, they're gonna reject you. Or even if like they say like 2000 words max for your short story, you will get automatically rejected if you submit 2001. So it's just being very mindful of that first and foremost, because really your chances are infinitely better if you follow everything to the T versus if you just willy nilly it, cause you're never gonna get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and and. I'm going to add just a little thing as a publisher, as a writer, I used to kind of think like, what makes them so special that they have all these rules mm -hmm. um, as a publisher on the publisher end of it, we're bound by paper costs and paper mm -hmm. and, you know, the balance of 110 pages is this cost, 109 pages is this cost and what our readers will read and who supports us. So there are very clear reasons why there are those rules, which as a writer, I thought we're just stupid. You know, mm -hmm. I get it now. I get it why. And it is, it, like you said, it's wasting everybody's time there. Mm -hmm. Yours as a writer, the publishers, you know, yeah. that is not gonna it's, sneak one through. <laughs> yes, and, and and I think too, like I actually read um, when I, I was, so I have a running spreadsheet of all the magazines that I think my work will fit into. Mm -hmm. So that way I can pull them up and see like when they're opening submissions, which is nice. And I re highly recommend doing that for anybody who's interested in short story publication. But I remember 
finding one that was recommended and I got sad that it was closed. And one of the reasons they cited for closing was due to the rising cost and people not respecting their time. They were a very small publisher. They said they would read every single submission and more often they were finding that people were not following the rules and an uptick in AI generated content. Oh, so no. they ended up closing because of those reasons. And, you know, they were very polite in their thing. They were like, we're not trying to blame anybody, but it became way too much to handle when it's not my full-time job. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it definitely, I think that's a conception too, that, you know, the publishers are making loads of money mm -hmm. and pretty on par with writers. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. You have good days and you have more often than not it's for the love of it which is mm -hmm. you know which is fine well how about you as a writer what are what are some of the what are you working on right now and how can we support you with that yeah so i actually am very excited because i am working as of today august 1st is i met my deadline so i'm working on my second draft of my vampire horror fantasy novel awesome Yes. So for now, like I said, I'm not really publishing it. I am going to go traditional with this book. This is intended to be my next query project, but I will be actually looking for beta readers uh, probably in September. I'm, I'm feeling relatively confident with this draft, but I want readers to be safe. So the best way to support me right now would be to follow me on YouTube and support my journey. If I end up looking for the readers, you know, and you're interested, that would be a big help because I do need reliable readers who are actually going to follow through the whole thing because <laughs> that's hard yeah. to find. Um, and, you know, if monetary is more your speed, I do have a coffee page. I don't really promote it because it's not something I necessarily need. But, you know, that would help with like printing some like costs and things like that to print it out and read things. So you know, that's always a way to to support me directly. Awesome. Awesome. And those links are in the description. Um, if, if you do want to support Brie, I will say too, just as like an urge to be a first reader or to help out as a beta reader, that is where I learned the most stuff mm -hmm. when I'm beta reading, because I learned for my own self, um, oh, this works really well. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, Brie did this. I love how she did this. I'm not going to copy it, but mm -hmm. it opens up a new thought of how I can do something, you know, too. So I, I think beta reading and slush reading is awesome, mm -hmm. especially when you're getting, but even like, no matter how experienced you are, you're going to find new ideas, new thoughts, new way of, you might learn what Shen formatting is, you know, late in the game, <laughs> yes. like seven years into it. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, awesome. yeah, and I will also just say to that too, I agree. And that was tied back to the the thing about feedback will hit your ego a little bit. Mm -hmm. Beta reading really helped me in my own writing because I was able to understand how to give positive feedback and good feedback. And then I was also able to take it more because I'm like, well, if I'm giving someone because I want them to make their story better, then I also need to accept that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. That it, And it's a skill both ways. It's a skill to create the story. It's also a skill to dissect the story yes. and, and try to see the part, oh, it's not working for me here. And this is why, mm -hmm. but and, and in an objective way, not, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't like that character because they had red hair and I don't trust red nuts or whatever. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Please, if mm -hmm. you have if you have ginger, I please don't say that I'm like, I don't like ginger and I married one. <laughs> I'm using examples. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really good advice. So, well, how... What is, where can we find you? You said your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So I would say primarily I am most frequently on YouTube at Brie Bonomo or on Instagram, Brie.B.Writes. I'm pretty much everywhere, though. I do have TikTok. I have a Twitter that I don't go on much, much, but I keep it there just for the, the pitch contest pretty much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I'm on discord a lot. I do have two discord channels that I run and I could definitely get those links to you. They're free to the public. Absolutely. One is a very curated writing discord. So I have so many sections for talking about specific genres. So if you are, you know, wanting to talk just about the general horror genre, you can. And then I have a section for submission and feedback and all that stuff. So I try to make it as inclusive as possible and being able to share 
and talk through other writers who might not have had that space. Um, Cause I will say discord for me before I created my own was also a very positive space for connecting with other writers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. And that's, and I love that you, cause discord isn't a super common mm -hmm. place for us to all hang out. Instagram is or Facebook, mm -hmm. depending on your age. Um, but that is, it, you're reaching people where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us are, I have way too many Discord channels that I belong to, but I'm not, I've, I've never started one for myself, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's people that love Discord, so. Yeah, I am one of them. I use Discord all the time to the point mm -hmm. where my friends get annoyed because they'll be like, let me send you a Streamlert link. And I'm like, why are you just jumping Discord? I already have the app. So I'm yeah. definitely a, a lover of it. I've created many, many channels in my time. Um, That's funny. Yeah, but I do think it's also very accessible for people who maybe mm -hmm. don't want to put their stuff out there. Like, you know, I get it because I've definitely died down on my consistency in posting because I focused and reprioritized things. But if you just are someone who like, I don't want to have pictures on Instagram, I don't want to have a YouTube, Discord's like a great place. It's a giant mm -hmm. chat room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, I think it's I think of it as like modern at Facebook, maybe mm -hmm. Facebook without the drama, because I don't really yes. see how you could do drama in Discord. Yeah, I, I, yeah, somebody would prove me wrong with that. But <laughs> there is trust me, there's definitely drama, Um, sometimes in the form of bots. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> scammers, yeah. You know, but really, like, it's nice because like with mine, you definitely you need to get the link. So you'd actually have to like find me, click on the link and join. And that's mm -hmm. sometimes too much work for those kind of people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Nice insulation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. And then another part too, I I have read it, but I'm not like, I don't have a community, but just for people to be aware to connect, Reddit's a little bit more tough. <laughs> people can be a little bit uh, feral on Reddit, <laughs> but I learned so much going through the subreddit pub tips mm -hmm. and sub subreddit writers and connecting with people. That was where I actually found my earliest critique partners and beta readers. Awesome. Not that they lasted, but I learned a lot. And pub tips in particular was great for my query letter because they have like a rule where you can post up your query letter and you could do it up to three times and people will just freely give you comments on what works for them or not. And again, oh, wow. I, for as somebody who really didn't have the money at the time to pay a professional to do a career, like a career letter critique, mm -hmm. having free feedback from people who just want to give it was amazing. That is amazing. And I've mm -hmm. never even thought of that. Um, I've, I've danced around Reddit, but not really been mm -hmm. on it. I didn't even know there was anything li like that, but I would have mm -hmm. definitely used that because especially when you're beginning out, who has money yes. for all these editors and it's expensive. Yes. It is even, and then like not to knock Fiverr, but like, it's really hard to find people who like will actually give you what you need because they have such vague, like, real quick posts to be like, this is what I do. Yeah. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Ex well, and, and also um, there's no editing certification necessarily yes. anybody. And that's why you have to be wise as mm -hmm. the writer, because anybody I'm not, I'm, I'm definitely not talking about any bad things about any, in, no. anybody, but like anybody can be an agent. Anybody mm -hmm. can be an editor. Anybody can be a publisher. There's no, so you really do have to be discerning and wise mm -hmm. when you're going out there with your intellectual property. This is very precious to you, you know, mm -hmm. and we, and you need to make sure you take care of it. Exactly. So, well, awesome. I, that is it for today. Thank you so much for being on here. Um, your links will be in the description for everybody to find. And what is, what's the number one thing you wish everybody would do right now? Like go, go to your YouTube and mm -hmm. like, and subscribe, or where would you send us? Ooh, that's a, I didn't think about this question in advance, but, um, I would probably say my, it, it depends on what you want, but YouTube and Instagram would be my top two. So go to YouTube. If you want to see like what is going on all the time, Instagram for like funny memes and quick updates. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, I like both of those things. So mm -hmm. if I haven't already subscribed, which I think I did, but I'm going to go double did. check. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. And I will see you next week with more extra. Bye. Grab some paper, grab your pen, open opportunities, and you can begin. When you exercise your rights and get published, you may change. Write your own path.
both wonderful and strange with opportunities. With opportunities. Strange with opportunities With opportunities